Today I'm outside of Congregational Lutheran United Church in Gardner, North Dakota. It is a church that began as the Congregational Church back in the late 1800s. And then later it joined with St. Mark's Lutheran Church as a joint congregation in the small town of Gardner. People just didn't have the wherewithal or the means, I guess, to maintain two church buildings. And so this is one of the congregations I am currently serving, but it's also the congregation in all of my years of ministry that I have served the longest. We're going to go inside today and I'm going to show you a couple things. The, the first thing is the document of incorporation as a congregation. And the second is a communion set that came from another person in the late 1800s. There is a certificate of corporate existence dated May 1980. And to the right of that in the corner is a cabinet that has a communion set and there is a letter up above that explains how this communion set came to be a part of this congregation. And the letter is dated 1899 and this communion set came from another group in New England, North Dakota. A lot of memories, a lot of usage of sacramental finery days of serving and being a larger congregation and being a very important part of this community. I want to share with you as you continue to look at these two things from Hebrews the 12th chapter. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. The late 1800s, the race that is set before us. Did they even know what was yet to come and the changes that would occur. And I want to share with you today a little bit of personal history, which kind of dovetails with that, in that do we really know what's set before us? In 1981, I was ordained and became a pastor. And throughout a number of years and those early decade of my pastoral life, I found myself involved with a number of human service organizations or having more interest in working with people with addiction issues or mental health issues. That in contrast to simply being satisfied, so to speak, with the functioning of the church or worship or those structures. And so it was in the mid-90s, after a few changes in congregations throughout the upper Midwest, that I was accepted into a year residency in clinical pastoral education. It's a year of training that at the end certifies those individuals, certifies them nationally to be chaplains. I was able to spend that year residency at the Mayo Medical Center in Rochester. Our family with our two daughters, young children. We were living in Austin, Minnesota where my wife Brenda worked at St. Olaf Lutheran Church. So following my year residency, I applied for a couple chaplaincy positions 
made it through a few interviews, but ultimately was not the final candidate. So I needed to find some kind of work. I began working for a private organization in the Austin, Minnesota area, working with teenagers who had emotional and behavioral challenges in their life. And my role was to be a person at one of the Austin, Minnesota middle schools to work with some of those teenagers to help them maintain their status in the public school system. It was challenging. It was something I really hadn't expected to do in life. But it was indeed insightful. I had a 90-day probation. On the 88th day of my 90-day probation, I got called in to talk to my supervisor and figured, well, okay, this was the process to continue on. But to my surprise, he said I was no longer going to be employed. I didn't make it through my probationary period. Devastated, angry, feeling that I had been in some ways blindsided. I wanted to fight back. But I came to the realization that that really wasn't going to do anything. So I needed to find other employment. In Austin, Minnesota, the home of Hormel Foods, there is usually work to be found. So I got a job working for quality pork processors. It was a company that did some of the early stages of killing and cutting and preparing pork for Hormel to finish the processing. I was in the sanitation department. It was a nighttime job. It fit into our family structure. So I could come home and be with my daughters as they went off to school, sleep during the day, and be there in the afternoon when they came back. It was work I had never done before. High pressure hoses, hot water, chemicals, all kinds of rubber gloves and rubber boots, wet most of the time working with other people, but in many ways working alone on a separate line to get it cleaned up and ready to go. It was a challenging experience, humbling experience, and I learned a lot. I learned that some people would get off of work at 7.30 in the morning and go to happy hour at one of the local bars and come back the next night having not gone home. I learned that I was equal to everyone else there. I had a job to do and I did it. And just as a side note, Larry in Hillsboro, if you're listening to this, yes indeed, I did do real work for nine months of my life. Once I came into that plant, as much as I might have thought at one point I was better than those who work in a meat processing plant. I was equal, maybe not even equal because I was the new kid on the block. But I learned a lot. I learned a lot about myself, about other people, about hard work, but about what you need to do to get through situations in life. Out of that came a bit of, as some of you know, some of my love or quirkiness about a certain canned meat product that comes out of Hormel Foods. A couple weeks ago, I found out about a photographer in Chicago who takes pictures of food and food products. And lo and behold, I was able to secure a nice photograph of my favorite canned meat product, Spam. Why do I spend money in the time of COVID-19 on such a picture? Because it reminds me. 
It reminds me that I've been in tough times. It reminds me that many people have gone before me and as the book of Hebrews said, a great cloud of witnesses and I've persevered and I've come to a different part of my life and I've been able to, as was stated in a few videos ago, embrace what is. Instead of being angry and bitter and fighting back, to accept what is and to keep moving forward. When I see this picture, is it always smiles? No, it reminds me of some very difficult times in my life, not only physically, but emotionally and spiritually. And yet I can stand here today making videos and saying, we can get through this. Or as I stated way back when with my friend Rick, it doesn't always get worse. Communion wear and articles of incorporation from over a century ago, and this congregation still here. It is small, and right now, as you can see, it is empty. And we talk about wondering how long we will stay open. But for now, we're here. We're sharing support and grace and love with one another. And so in the midst of COVID-19 and wondering what in the heck is coming next, hopefully in the midst of the roller coaster of emotions, we can find times to smile, times to shake our heads, time to wonder, but time to know that our Lord, the risen Lord Jesus, what Christians celebrate at Easter, is with us in this journey. Gracious God, continue to surround us on our journeys, to allow us to embrace what is, to look at those things that sometimes make us laugh, sometimes make us cry, sometimes just make us wonder what's coming next. But in it all, assure us that you are with us to provide us the strength and the grace and the steadfastness to keep moving into another day.